Welcome to Moxa Security Talks. My name is Jesse and I'm the host. In today's session, we have invited the research director of IDC, Jonathan Lang, who focuses on worldwide IT OT convergence strategies. He will be talking to us about the trending topics of the OT market this year. In the meantime, we also have two Moxa experts on the line to tell us about Moxa's capabilities and also what's coming up for Moxa's latest product and solution portfolios. Hello, Jonathan. Thank you for coming to Moxa Security Talks to share the latest trends of the OT market with Moxa and our audience. Hi, it's nice to be here. So, Jonathan, I know you've been working on this global IT OT convergence survey for the past several years. Have you found any interesting highlights or trends that you could share? Sure, yeah, there are a lot of interesting highlights, but uh, here we'll talk about for a minute the top priorities uh, for investment for industrial operations. And you can see a lot has changed from 2018 to 2020. Businesses are looking to become more resilient, which started before, but has been accelerated by the global impact of COVID-19 and supply chain disruptions. They're doing this by building remote operations capabilities and more predictive capabilities. These capabilities are critical to survive and thrive in the market today. In the digital economy, technology is key to achieving operational resilience. And in order to achieve this, IT OT convergence is required. Closed OT systems will need to move towards more open OT architecture, which requires enhanced, adaptable, and scalable networking capabilities, as well as bringing cybersecurity to a higher level. Indeed, I can see from your slide that cybersecurity, IoT, and also ITOT convergence have all increased dramatically from 2018 to 2020. As we are at the beginning of this year, Jonathan, could you share with us the major trends that drive the new market demands? Sure. Every year, IDC produces a top 10 predictions we call IDC Futurescapes. And I'll share a few key predictions for 2022 and beyond for us to talk about today. The first prediction is about remote operations and remote monitoring using operational data. Enabling remote operations includes a top set of initiatives for gaining competitive advantage, helping with the expertise shortage, building scalable and manageable AI models and processes, leveraging maintenance resources more effectively, and helping with other challenges that organizations face. To unify data requires connectivity and confidence in the network backbone. Many of these initiatives to date have assumed the devices they are unifying are low risk, but with new connectivity comes increased risk profile. So what is the impact to IT and operations? IT needs to determine how to ensure security practices can be extended to operational data without negatively impacting production. IT may also need to deploy and maintain edge infrastructure in the OT environment for data capture, processing, and analysis. The next trend here is about priorities for investment in the digital world. Part of this shift to remote operations capabilities involves a move to a more open architecture in OT. This requires enhanced, resilient, and extensible network capabilities as well as new levels of cybersecurity. More IT technologies are being embedded in operations, requiring scalable ways to manage it remotely, improve the underlying security of the software, and better ways to design and engineer automation systems. Applications that create and consume data must span from the edge to the cloud, and this move will uh, continue to automation capability, capable systems over time, changing how these systems are designed and engineered. The IT OT convergence that is happening shifts infrastructure requirements from the isolated proprietary OT systems of the past to more shared edge resources on the network, making the role of the network more critical to control processes. For IT, this means you need to prioritize resilience for edge resources. As more processes depend on IT resources and edge locations, connectivity and availability of IT resources will be the lifeblood of operations. 
Thank you, Jonathan, for sharing these key findings with us. Now, I would like to turn to our Moxa expert, Marty Wachi. Marty Wachi is a BDM for networking infrastructure in the US. He is very advanced in observing new demands from the transiting market landscape. Hi, Marty. What is your discovery about customers' needs for remote, remote, uh, sorry, for remote operations and cybersecurity? What do you think about visibility and simplified management versus composable network infrastructure? Hi, Jesse. Thanks a lot. Um, yeah, a lot of things going on. So as far as what's happening and what we're seeing today, uh, you know, there's a lot of attacks going on more so this year than the previous year. Um, as a result of that, you know, and COVID, we're seeing a lot more of our customers working remote, managing networks remotely. I think one of the things that they all have in common is this um, idea of IT and OT convergence. It's not new, it's something that we've seen for the last couple of years, but I think based on the number of attacks, COVID, a lot of different factors, it's really starting to accelerate the need to have this happen even quicker. Um, as a result, um, I think our customers are looking for better tools to be able to help facilitate this. Um, so when you look at some of our products today and some of the next generation products that we're coming out with um, this year, uh, one of the things that they have in common to like help our customers with this accelerated OT and IT convergence are IT based protocols like SNMP and Syslog and uh, AAA and Radius that allow these OT networking um, products that we have to integrate better with standards IT based utilities and protocols. Um, as a result, I think one of the other things that uh, you asked was really around uh, network management and visibility. Uh, so with again, from a security perspective, a lot of our customers are really finding that they need better and, and uh, more advanced visibility than what they have today, um, knowing just what's on their network and what shouldn't be on their network, understanding uh, what types of applications and what kinds of users are, are going across the network. Um, that type of visibility, uh, most of our customers today don't have um, those capabilities um, built into their network yet. So as, again, this OT and IT convergence happens, uh, security becomes more top of mind. These are some of the next generation features um, that you'll see as we deliver some of our new products this year to, to add those capabilities uh, to give our customers and our partners uh, that visibility that they're looking for to help uh, combat some of these new attacks um, that we're starting to see. So, Jonathan, are these related priorities unveiled in IDC's predictions as well? Yeah, sure. Uh, we have a prediction here around connected products. Uh, embedded connectivity and digital capabilities are going beyond operations to customer environments through connected products. Uh, what this means is that discrete manufacturers have responsibility for secure and reliable connectivity of their offerings. Companies that want to capitalize on the services opportunity for connected products must ensure they are connecting them securely and in line with regulations and standards. IT will need to develop a strategy that will balance and integrate hardware, software, services, and connectivity while ensuring data accessibility, integrity, and security. And then our next uh, prediction is about the skills required to manage cybersecurity. Combining subject matter expertise from operations is critical to ensure integrity and security of operation systems. And for several reasons, we cannot apply IT approaches to OT because of the unique requirements that operations carries around availability and network dynamics. One trend is that enterprises are collaborating between IT and OT in the areas of industrial networking, operations cybersecurity, AI and data model management, data governance, and low-code development on platforms. We call these collaborative groups digital engineering organizations. In our conversations with clients, the top challenge in OT security is having context for OT assets and protocols, as well as the business processes that they relate to. This requires companies to work with providers that can meet industry standards, including government certifications, 
and work with tools which are friendly to operations users. With OT networks continuing to grow in both number of devices and external connections, an undersecured industrial facility is no longer an option, nor is air gapping the OT network. Contextually driven modern IT security tools will be necessary for preventing some of the most critical facilities and infrastructure from being the most at risk and least secured. To leverage the expertise from both worlds, OT security ownership should be split between the operations team and the security team. With the digital future and increased connectedness of operations, new industry requirements and standards will be put in place and some are already there. Companies must ensure providers can keep up with these requirements. These specialized industry requirements can be overlooked by many IT-focused cybersecurity solutions. In talking with Moxa, I've understand that you have some great knowledge on these industry standards. Right, so Moxa has been dedicated to following these standards and frameworks as closely as possible. But hey, who am I? We have an industrial cybersecurity expert with us here today. Felipe Sabino Costa from Moxa is here to talk to us about the importance of trending industry standards, the IEC 62443. What are its benefits and value to the ecosystem of the global automation industry and supply chain? Hi, Felipe. This topic is definitely your expertise. Could you tell us about the increasing requirements around the IEC 62443 standards? Sure. Thanks for the question, actually. It's a, a very great question. Uh, indeed, we are seeing an increasing number of companies demanding for, for different sections of the 62443. And we have many reasons for that. I believe the first one, uh, mainly because the, the section four uh, that brings the components secured and discussion. And we have also the section three regarding systems that we have three documents there. Very good documents, by the way. And on all those documents, uh, we have a concept that we call security level. And security level, in summary, defines seven different perspectives of security that we call fundamental requirements. And as we increase the level of secure security one, two, three, and four, you also increase the, the security demand and the security resource for that. So in summary, uh, I believe these companies are using this standard because it helps us to have a common language to, because security is a very misleading concept. Uh, everyone has uh, a different concept of security. So this is a standard, this series of standard is definitely help us to, to have on the same page uh, on the concept of the discussion of security. So this is, I believe, one of the main points uh, why this standard is so popular uh, nowadays. Of course, this standard also covers uh, what we call the pillars of cybersecurity that people, process, and technology. So in other words, besides to, to have the common language to help on the discussions and the understanding of what is security in these different perspectives, we also have the coverage of these pillars uh, and the company so can have a holistic, uh, say, approach of cybersecurity that's really important uh, when adopting a secured solution or a secured um, strategy on the company. So exactly because of that, I believe uh, it, the company is definitely uh, using this type of standard on their specifications. Other point and lastly, uh, the, the standard EC 6443 also help us uh, in the context of certification. Nowadays we have labs. Uh, that can certify and test that all the security requirements that uh, the company and the supplier are discussing are really embedded on the device, on the solution itself. So it is really helpful to the customer to ensure that all the concepts that are sometimes really difficult uh, to explain are there. So just it's just a matter of the customer to define the security goal based on risks, what are the main risks, and once it's defined security level for the specific zone, for example, uh, it's just a matter to find a supplier that has the certification and in summary, it will guarantee that the product and the solution will have the secured features or, or the secured functionalities uh, needed to accomplish their security goal. So I believe all these topics together make this uh, standard so popular and important to the industrial space. Thank you, Felipe. I'm sure our audience has learned a lot. 
Now, Jonathan, the predictions you shared are helpful for all enterprises that are on the path to IT-OT convergence. Do you have any specific guidance for enterprises in 2022 and in the years to come? Of course, every IDC presentation always must end with guidance for enterprises. So just to summarize a few here. Uh, first, because of the unique nature of OT environments, network security is the most common approach to ensure overall cybersecurity. These two strategies of networking and cybersecurity should be combined to succeed. Second, think about the increased strategic importance of the network and ensure resiliency by having more than sufficient bandwidth and rigorous cybersecurity built in from the ground up through all components and systems in the network. This will support overall operations resiliency as well as support new capabilities such as open automation, remote operations, and AI and analytics running in real time in the, at the edge in operations. Third, as the world's critical infrastructure becomes more connected, new industry requirements and standards will be put in place. Ensure that your providers can keep up with these requirements and keep an eye out for IT-like solutions that might overlook them. And lastly, develop a digital engineering organization to combine disciplines from operations and IT in areas such as AI and data model management, industrial networking, cybersecurity, data governance, edge computing, and application development in low-code environments. Thank you for your sharing today, Jonathan, Marty, and also Philippe. We have thoroughly enjoyed your inspiring opinions and also IDC's insights. I'm sure our audience have received a lot of valuable insight into the current market status and future predictions. Now, in the end of this show, if you're still wondering what is the name of this awesome show, this is Moxa Security Talks. Please subscribe and follow us to learn more about the latest OT cybersecurity trends from experts. See you next time.